All right, welcome back. So you apparently survived the first video. Um, hopefully you're not too bored and aren't just dying with excitement to watch the second video. Anyway, I hope you had a chance to get your um, list of assignment marks created, whatever it was that you decided to do. Hopefully you didn't have any issues with it. Um, in this video right here, we're going to take a look at a couple of different things. Basically, this is the kind of practical part. Now you've got that a list created, now how are we going to do something with it? So we're going to look at a couple of different things in this particular video. Uh, number one, we're going to look at uh, creating assignments and then using those uh, assignment marks that you've did, that you've created. Um, second thing is going to be entering some grades and taking a look at what that process looks like. Uh, I'm also going to go into um, I'm sort of assuming you've already created some assignments earlier this year that you need to now convert uh, to assignment marks, and so I'll show you how to do that. And the last thing, I'll kind of show you what it looks like in the, in the grade book real quickly so you can see what that appears like. So um, you guys know how to do this. I mean, you've created 100 assignments before. Um, what's different now is at the very bottom of the Create Assignment window. So you've already gone into Assignments. You've clicked Create New Assignment. You've entered your title and your abbreviations and all that kind of stuff. This little video, this little uh, block here that you can see is at the very bottom of that screen where it says Grading Tasks. And you check the box for Semester Assignments. Uh, under here, where mine says Total Points, you'll have a couple of different check boxes. If you use different categories, you may just have one that says Total Points, but you might have one that says Quizzes and another one says Homework or something along those lines. So you're going to check that box under there. And then you've got these two spots. And this is really the critical place that you've got to get this part right. If you don't do this one right, nothing else is going to work. So you need to take a look at clicking this button right here where it says marks. Um, we've always just, it defaults to points, but now we need to click to the marks button and I'll show you what that looks like. So once you click on it, another little mini menu thing is going to come up and it says assignment marks select marks to use when you click on that uh, and kind of and it, the it's a little menu right so as you click and hold on that uh, it's going to pop up that full list one of them will say alpha one of them will say performance scores please don't use that one that's the old one that's garbage uh, and then it should have on that list now your new marks that you just created. I called mine mastery scores, whatever you called yours. It should be on that list. So just click and drag to that mastery scores uh, and let it go. Please don't choose that old one that says performance based or formative or something along those lines because um, that's the one that's that's crazy weird. Um, next thing is you want to enter in uh, a number of points in the points box. Um, really the easiest thing is just to leave everything at 100 um, and don't even bother changing it. You don't have to change it to 4 because it's a 4 point scale. Just leave it at 100 or leave it at 10 or whatever you want to. Uh, trust me, in the end this will all work itself out. If each assignment has the same number of points, it's going to be fine. Especially if all those formative things are kind of in their own category. Uh, and it's a pretty common thing to have all those formative things in one spot and other formative things in a different spot. But you know, you can play around with it if you want to. Uh, if you're going to do a bunch of these formative assignments, I just make them all in one category and call them all 100 um, and it'll be uh, a little bit easier for you. Okay, next step is when you go to um, actually entering scores. So you've saved that assignment uh, and then you click on save and score is usually the quickest way to get to this particular uh, menu or you can save it and come back to it later. But now look, there's a little bit of a difference um, in this um, entering scores window. You can see that in the score spot, um, there's actually now a little drop down menu at each spot. It used to be just a little box where you could just type in a number, uh, but now you actually have to click and drag. And so when I click on this one, it's going to show up all those lists of things. Like I had a 4, a 3, a 3.5, a 2.5, etc. So I can just click and drag down to the one that I want to use. Uh, make sure not to try to type in a number. You're not going to use the keyboard for this. Um, it's going to kind of be weird if you do that. Um, and and then, just so you know, for time saving, the fill all and fill empty, fantastic. So if you know that most kids are just starting off and they're all partially proficient because they know some of the basics but nothing else, you can just go up to this little top menu right here, this little top uh, bar, and click uh, 2.0, partially proficient, fill all. Or, uh, for example, you have a couple of kids that did fantastically and got some fours. You can click those couple kids that got the fours, and then up in this fill empty, you could go up and put threes in for everybody else, or whatever the case may be. So those are nice, good time savers uh, to just kind of put in a couple extra things. Um, the tricky part, uh, of course, uh, converting assignments. I'm assuming you may already have some assignments in there um, that you entered with points. Um, and so this is how you're going to change that. If you take a look again, this is what the ones with points look like. They've got that box there, as opposed to in the previous one that has the pull-down menu. So there's the pull-down as opposed to the box. It looks a little different. Um, but if you've typed in scores for something and you need to now convert it, um, it's a little bit of a pain, but it's not that bad. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go up to Edit Assignment, um, and that's up at the top. You'll find that assignment, go click on Edit Assignment, bring that back up, and then 
go back and do that process like we did earlier. Change it to marks down at the very bottom. Uh, change it to 100 points or whatever you want to call it. But you've got to go back and choose that marks section. Keep in mind, four here, four points, is not the same as a mark of four. So you've really got to go back and do this. So good news is it's not going to lose your data. Don't panic, okay? It'll be just fine, I promise. So go back, edit the assignment, choose marks, and then you're going to come back. So when you come back now to the save and score, all those scores that you have are going to be over there. And you can kind of see them right here. That's that 4, 3, and 3.5. But you'll notice that those scores don't have the little PP or the A or the P next to it. They're just those numbers now converted into something else. It's not really a mark and it's not really a point either. It's kind of weird. Um, so all you need to do then is then use that little mark, that drop down menu. And so this one had a four in it originally. So I just click on the drop down and go pick the four that has the AP next to it. This one had a three in it originally. I went down, use the drop down menu and pick the 3.0P on it. Um, yes, you have to do that for every single grade, for every single kid, uh, but it's not like your scores are all gone and missing and then you've lost that and have to write it down or thing like that. Um, last thing, please don't forget to hit save. It's going to be really annoying. If you don't do that, it's going to go back to points again, and now it's going to be completely messed up. So like I said, if you need to convert it, go back to edit the assignment, select marks from the very bottom of that page, hit save, or save and score, and then when you come back to now the score page, all of those original marks, are going to, or all those original points, are going to be there. Just use the little drop-down menu to pick the actual mark that matches the number that you had entered previously. Kind of a pain, but it's not too bad. It's just a little bit time-consuming, so hopefully you don't have too many of those that you have to worry about. Now, last thing is, uh, going to the gradebook. Here's what a, a kind of sample gradebook section is going to look like. Uh, and I've had a, a little category in mind called formative assessments, things along those lines. Uh, and then this was my sample assignment that I had created, and there's the scores that are on there. Uh, there's never enough room in the gradebook to show the whole thing, but you can usually tell that it's a mark as opposed to a point because it'll have that dot, dot, dot after it, or sometimes the letters will show. Um, so I know that's not a score of 3.0. It's actually a 3.0, which means proficient in my marks section. Uh, and then you'll see over here in the percent column, that's at the head of that particular section, um, that it's going to use the, the matching percentages. So a 4 in my marks scale was worth 100 points or 100%. A 3 was worth a B minus 82%. 3.5 was worth a, a minimum A and 90%. Uh, and so that will uh, average those all together. So if you have a bunch of assignments that all have marks in them, um, those percentages are going to get used to calculate the overall percent for that particular category. Okay, so let's take a look at live action. Uh, we'll come back when we're done. We'll take a look at one last video. It's kind of more like philosophical. It's not really so practical, so if you want to skip it, whatever. Uh, but it's that last kind of little little piece about why are we doing this. So let's take a look at what this looks like for real. Hopefully um, I haven't killed it yet. So here we are at Infinite Campus. Um, here's my assignment marks. I'm going to go up to Assignments and let it load up. So here's my whole list of assignments. This was actually from my study hall class from last year, so kind of ignore a lot of what you're seeing. Um, I'm going to go down to the bottom. There's my couple samples that I have created. Here was my sample marks assignment that I created. Um, so let me load this up. So I just called it sample. Again, up at the top here, the regular stuff that you're going to do. Uh, and then all the way down at the bottom, if I can get it to go. It's still loading. All the way down. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Internet is so slow. All right, so this is where I checked on the grading task that it goes in semester assignments. And you can see in my class here, I actually have a couple of different grading tasks that I could pick from. I put this particular assignment in formative points because um, I wasn't counting it just yet. So I clicked that one, but you could pick your quizzes or your tests or you know whatever you're calling, wherever you're putting your formative stuff. Here I can see I clicked on marks. Here's that list. I can click on this now and show you what that looks like. So when I click on that, you can see the whole list of different things, uh, different assignment marks I've created. There's the alpha one. There's a couple that, that are ones that I was playing around with as I was working on it. But the one I had just created, the one that you recognize is called Mastery Scores. Performance-based, again, this is that terrible one. Please don't use that. It'll show up in yours. And alpha will show up in yours. So don't use that one either. So whatever you just created, you're going to pick that one. Again, you can see I just left it as 100 points. Uh, multiplier, just leave it um, in terms of what it is. And then when I go to Save and Score, Please ignore the names of the students here. Again, I know it's last year's stuff, so we're not, we don't, don't close your eyes right. Um, you can see that I've entered these in here. So when you click on this, again, it just, I click on that little piece there, and you can see the drop down menu. So I can pick whatever letter it is that I want, whether it's a three. Dalton, let's give him a one. What do you think? Dalton, you listening? I hope not. Uh, but anyway, whatever the particular score was, you just click and drag. So it makes it really easy. Uh, the nice thing again, if I want to do the fill empty, everybody else got a two. Yeah, they just showed up that week. I hit collect the two up here, 
hit fill empty, and now everybody has scores of two. It's kind of nice to be able to do that. Uh, and so you can hit save or whatever you want to do with that. Um, let me go back to my assignment list, uh, leave that page, um, and show you how to convert. I'm going to go back down to my bottom. Here's my sample one that I had created that had points in it. So I'm going to run through how to convert a points assignment to um, a mastery scores or a formative assessment scores type of assignment. So here you can see my original one down here. This one was worth points, and I had it as four points. So they either got four, three, two, or one points to it. So this is how you do the conversion. I'm going to click on marks. I'm going to select the marks that I want to use. And again, I want to use that mastery scores. And then I'm going to change this to 100, because that's what I'm going to do with all the other ones later on, because uh, it's easier in the, short, in the shorthand. So now I've changed those couple of things. I change it to marks. I pick the assignment mark that I wanted to, change the total points to 100. And then I'm going to go to save and score. Remember, I already have some points entered in on this. So now you can see these were the points that I had entered in before. It was 2.5 out of 4 points, 2.0 out of 4 points, and 4 out of 4 points. So all I need to do now is do that same kind of menu selection. I know this person had a 2.5, so now I can just pick the 2.5, and now that becomes a mastery score. The 2.0, again, I can switch down and pick the 2.0, and now it's a mastery score. And you can see it's a little different because the letters appear in there, and that's the big uh, key, and that's one of the reasons why I put the letters in the mastery score when I did it. So you could visually identify the difference between points and an actual mastery, point, mastery score of some sort. Uh, I'll do that with uh, Mr. Gonzalez as well here, give him the four that he so desperately deserves. So there you go. Um, anyway, once you've got those in there, now those are converted to the right kind of score. So let's take a look at the grade book and see what this looks like now that I've got a couple of points in there. Now again, this was um, I'm kind of stealing my last year's study hall class, so ignore their grades. It doesn't really matter because it was study hall anyway. Um, but I'll show you how this looks once it gets loaded up. Um, it always takes a little while. You guys know how that works, right? Um, so in any case, um, let's take a look at my section. So here it is over here the one called formative points. Um, it's in red because, um, and I'll talk about this later on, um, I chose as I was doing this one to have these be a formative thing where I was just sort of recording it, it wasn't a final score, so that's why it's in red, but don't worry about that. Um, but here you can see that I've got those uh, mastery scores are entered in, that, in there, um, and then now you can see right here the percentages that are being calculated based on those mastery percents. Um, so a 2.0 and a 3.0, um, that's not out of four points, or that's not out of a hundred points. That takes that 2.0, that partially proficient, and converts it into a percentage grade. I think it was a 75. Um, and then it takes that 3.0 and converts that into a proficiency grade. I think it's an 82. So if you average those two together, then you get a 74%. And that's where those numbers come from. Uh, is based out of that. So there you go. That's how you set up assignments. That's how you set up assignments, uh, new assignments uh, with marks, or how you convert old assignments uh, to assignments that have marks in them, and kind of take a look at what it looks like in the gradebook. Hopefully that works for you. Let me know if it doesn't, I guess. You can email me. Just yell really loud. I'm not that far away. Uh, and anyway, good luck. I hope you didn't bore you to death, and I'll see you in the last next video.